brioche bread or better known as babka. Here, stay tuned for the recipe, chocolate and cinnamon. Hello everybody, this is Alessandra. Welcome to my home, welcome to my kitchen. Just got back from Spain and I'm so charged to share more recipe. This recipe is from my cousin Rafaela. She's a pastry chef and opened up a beautiful cafe in Malaga. And this is one of the recipes she shared and it's so simple, delicious, and oh, wait till you see it, you're going to be just like, wow. Okay, so we're making babka, pan brioche, uh, dif different names, different filling. Uh, we're going to make two today. Uh, I've actually got the cinnamon sugar one out, but I think I'm going to squeeze in the chocolate one too. So bear with me. It looks like there's a lot of stuff, but it's really simple. You're making a brioche dough and then a, dif a, a filling. Um, here are the ingredients. The ingredients are in grams and I'm going to give them to you also in cups to be precise. But if you have a little scale, I use my Weight Watcher scale. Don't tell my leader that. Um, I, so definitely more precise baking with grams than it is with cups. So let's get started. We have a half a kilo of flour. It's all purpose flour. We have a teaspoon of salt, two eggs, uh, 60 grams of sugar. I'll also get it to you in cups, like I said. Now, the different ingredient in this recipe that takes it off the charts and makes it just delicious is the mascarpone. I have those small packages of eight, I think it's 8.8 .8 ounces, 250 grams of mascarpone. You could use dry active yeast, not the rapid, please be careful, not the rapid, the slow dry, dry active yeast, or I'm actually using uh, a third of the two ounce cube of the regular uh, yeast that's usually in the refrigerator section. Good luck finding it in the supermarket. I always go three, four times around and can never find it. Anyway, water, all into the uh, stand up mixer with the hook attachment and, um, and it's gonna do all the work. In the mixing bowl, add your flour your salt and your sugar but from the sugar retain a small little spoon and add it to your water because that's going to feed the yeast and let it and it lets it grow even faster so let's do that what i'm going to do here is just whisk it up the reason why it incorporates air and it lets the flour be lighter look how it changes consistency immediately just with a good whisk like this. The water is at room temperature. I have the sugar in. I'm gonna take the little cube and just add it in and kind of break it up like this. Just stir until it's fully dissolved. Of course, if you're using the granulated yeast, it's very simple, just add it in. And, the, and check that it starts bubbling. So you know, once it starts bubbling, you know it's ready. And it's live and active. Okay, it's all dissolved, look at that, okay? Now, what we're going to do is just add into the dry ingredients, just add the wet ingredients. So I'm gonna add the water and yeast mixture, the two eggs, and lastly, the mascarpone. I've left the, the mascarpone out about 30 minutes uh, as I was getting everything ready so it's nice and soft. Not very cold from the refrigerator. Now, let's get it under the stand-up mixer. We're going to be using a um, hook attachment, and you'll see the magic. The measurements are so precise that it comes together, and it's just a beautiful dough. Come and take a look as it forms a dough, right? Don't be afraid to stop it and scrape the sides. You might think that it looks dry. Don't panic, you just let it do its thing and you'll see because the mascarpone has a lot of cream in it, a lot of fat, so it will come together. Take a look now, just let it do its thing. I made it several times since I came back from Spain and it was always a success. It has finally picked up all the ingredients, so they're all combined. And now as it works, 
as it needs, you'll see it will change consistency. Perfect. It's been mixing for a good 10 minutes here. I want to show you, take a look at the dough. See, it's not really sticky, which is great, and it's very elastic. So now I have a, uh, a bowl. I greased it. You can use a little butter, a little oil, whatever you have on hand, uh, and we'll move it here. Look how beautifully it slides right off, and it doesn't stick. See that? Now I'm going to use a little scraper. Look at it right here. Plastic wrap right on top and what you're going to do is it needs to be overnight in the fridge Now when the house is nice and quiet what I did already is voila. I made this one last night Let's continue on Before I stretch the dough out what I'm going to do is create the filling So here I have the butter that's extremely softened. Uh, I'm gonna add the cinnamon and the sugar and what we're going to do is create a paste what happens if you put the cinnamon and sugar with the, the butter it just kind of falls out it doesn't really stick so you really do want to create this lovely uh, cinnamon sugar cream there you go set it aside till you need it and now let's get the dough Already, it's gonna be very cold, so it comes out really nice and easy. See, by greasing the bowl, nothing gets stuck there. Don't forget to sprinkle some flour on both sides. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to roll it out a little bit. Oops, goes back to me. Let's flour the rolling pin too. What I'm going to do is fold it like this and lob it like this. I'll tell you why. Because I want a rectangular to fit in here. So this is why I'm doing this. So I'm going to do it again. Okay, let's go. Again, going to fold it in three. And I'm going to look at this beautiful soft dough. That's exactly how it needs to be. Okay, now let's roll it out. And always don't forget to sprinkle the flour. To achieve the length of the pan, you're just gonna stretch it long. Time to spread the filling. Here it goes. Okay, perfect spread enough to get it spread everywhere now the next step is we need to roll this the tighter you roll it the more swirls of the cinnamon you'll have so let's do it i'm gonna get my hands my tips with the flour and let's just start nice and tight roll it If you flour your, your surface well, shouldn't be a problem. If it sticks a little bit, just move it with your, your finger and just keep rolling. Rolling, rolling like the river. Okay. Instead of singing La Tarantella, I'm singing Americans. Okay, now let's move it back to me. Here it goes. Pinch these sides. Okay, you don't want it to open, so just pinch it together and it will stick. See, it's closing like this. Pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, all the way closed like that. Now, kind of um, leave the seam on the side I'm going to leave, ready? Okay. Now, let's cut the loaf in half. See all the wonderful lines in it? Okay, there it goes. Now, let me move it like this. 
Okay. Okay, so here it goes. What we're going to do is just pinch it like this and we're gonna twist, 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 and twist. Okay, perfect. I'm using a 10 inch loaf pen. I've greased it and I'm just gonna do the parchment paper just like this. Because when the sugar melts, it's gonna stick. So you wanna be able to move it out properly. Now, gently pick it up and just place it in the loaf pan. Try to tuck it in underneath it nicely, like this, okay? Now, let it rise for another, I'm gonna say another hour, and then we'll bake it. For extra special treat, we're also going to be making a chocolate one. The ingredients are going to be, I have a cup of bittersweet chocolate, two tablespoons of cacao, a stick of unsalted butter, and two and a half ounces of powdered sugar. Let's move to the, to the stove and let's go ahead and make it. Okay, I want to show you a little trick because the bowl should not be touching the water. I don't have, my pots are not big and uh, small enough, so I use a uh, coquerella and then I lay my, my glass bowl, make sure it's uh, heat safe. And let's get the, the chocolate melted first. As the chocolate starts melting, also add the butter a little chunk at a time. Completely smooth chocolate. Now let's finish it up. Let's, I'm going to sift the powdered sugar and the cacao just because I don't want any lumps. Sifting in the powdered sugar and the cacao simply because you don't want any lumps just makes it so much easier. Be careful the bowl is hot so don't burn yourself. Simply mix it all in to create a lovely chocolate paste. So stretch it out and now let's get the chocolate. Wow, this is so decadent. Look at this. Spread it completely on the dough. Your fingertips and start rolling nice and tight. Fold it over and just pinch to seal all that chocolatey goodness inside. Okay, there it goes. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Perfect. Let's cut it. The chocolate one I would definitely put back um, in the fridge just because with the warm chocolate inside, it is going to um, need to be a little cooler. Also, in between the cutting, don't be afraid to clean your knife with a wet rag. Look at all this chocolatey goodness. Twist and twist. And twist here again. Let's get the. Don't worry, it looks messy, but wait till you see it cooked. Cinnamon one is ready to be baked. You see how nice it kind of doubled in its size, so let's get it in the oven. Oven at 335. Okay, out of the oven, they're nice and hot. The half smells divine. I made a simple syrup. Half a cup of water, half a cup of um, sugar, and I let it boil a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is come closer. I want to show you because what this does adds a beautiful sheen on top of the um, of the babka. So take a look at that. Just slowly, just add the simple syrup on. Just patiently, I did uh, the cinnamon one first because this one is I'm going to rub the uh, the simple syrup. Some of the chocolate is gonna lift off. Okay, the reason why the chocolate babka is higher, babka. Can I even say this? Pan and brioche, pan and brioche. Okay, is largest because the loaf pan is slightly smaller, so there's more dough and it came up high. Okay, here it is. I want to show you. Take a look at that. And this one, I'm going to pick this one up. Take a look at this one.
we're done. We gotta open it, right? I want you to see inside. Uh, hope it looks great. I hope it tastes even better. Please make my recipes. Hit subscribe, hit the like, hit the bell button, and let's cut this together. Okay. Look, look at those beautiful swirls and look how soft it is. Just really great. And now we're going. Ecco qua, guardate, it's oozing with chocolate out. I taste first. We're gonna go with the cinnamon first. Oh, soft, delicious. Oh, I even like the chocolate better. I didn't think it was possible. It's delicious. Today we have a very special mm -hmm. guest star. Here's Ma Madison. Hello. You gotta tell the truth, and nothing but the truth. So Come good. Bueno. So good. We got the approval. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Make these recipes. They are delicious. Mm -hmm. Grazie, Raffaella. Thank you, Raffaella, for giving me this delicious recipe. Grazie. Alla prossima. Arrivederci. Madison, really good? Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs>